The death of a fishing reel ends in two ways. Rusting or corroding to death, and or your thumb bar stops popping back up. Anglers across the world, if you've ever made a cast and your reel didn't re-engage immediately, I need you to stick around for the next 15 minutes. This video will change the way you see a modern fishing reel. My name is Bo Reed and I own Papa Chop's Rod and Reel Repair right here in Austin, Texas. A few keys to success that I have found to be very, very true. The key to success is failure. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. Make meaning, not money. Try to make the world a better place. Start with the customer and work your way backwards. And the latest, be the change you wanna see. Well folks, today I become that change. For 11 years, I have noticed a flaw in what I believe to be the heart and soul of a fishing reel. The heart, in my opinion, being the tender clutch pawl or kick lever. The soul, in my opinion, being the replacement part stock supplied by the manufacturer. I spent the last 10 years educating the public on this very common failure. For 10 years, I said, hey, manufacturers and public, this is an issue. Only with the highest of hopes that my message be noticed by a major manufacturer and to usher in only the fifth most meaningful sustaining innovation since the inception of the modern fishing reel. The fifth most meaningful sustaining innovation to the modern fishing reel is finally here, folks. Increased lifespan. Made possible after almost 12 years of first-hand knowledge and experience, eight years of research and development, and the capitalization on high-quality, locally-sourced precision machining to provide an alternate created only to increase the quality and expected durability from years to decades upon decades. While recommended general fishing reel preventive maintenance measures must always be adhered to, we have now come one step closer to never being forced into buying a new reel ever again. The first four most meaningful sustaining innovations in my opinion being different gear ratios, drag systems, work, worm shaft groups, and braking systems. All else, in my opinion, is just cosmetic enhancements in many ways, with very rare exceptions. For the last 10 years, I have rightfully placed the blame for all these issues at the foot of the manufacturers. A few manufacturers provide a large replacement part stock supply. Some try but don't do it very well or for very long after their product's release date and more and more hardly do it at all. I get asked a lot, what's the best reel that I should buy? The answer is unfortunately complex and would take too much time to explain, but once you've worked on over 12,000 fishing reels, you begin to notice that the construction of and material used all begins to look very, very similar. Well, noticing this, I realize that they all have similar potential for similar wear and tear. So the real question became, which manufacturer makes the best fishing reel that I should buy? My answer became much, much easier. Buy from the manufacturers providing the largest replacement part stock supply for their products. With all due respect to the manufacturers that unquestionably do it better than the rest. In my opinion, over time, even they will experience a diminishing replacement part stock supply for their products that they've just released in the past. The same parts that wear on you, wear out on everybody else too. So inevitably, even the most critically affected parts made by the most capable manufacturers will start to disappear. In with the new, out with the old. This is understandable, in my opinion. After 11 years of business and shouting loud enough for all those that chose to listen to hear me, the heart and soul of your reel changed, but it still stayed flawed. It still didn't matter how well you cared for your reel or neglected it. It still experienced the same or very similar wear and tear just from simply using it. This common failure has to be known of by the fishing reel manufacturers. 
After decades and decades, this failure has received very little attention or user awareness. The basic premise of this failure is, the more you use it, the sooner it will fail. This is not understandable, in my opinion. This stock part failure goes like this. One, you hit the thumb bar and make a cast. Two, the lure reaches your predetermined destination. Three, you turn the handle to re-engage your reel to retrieve your line and lure. Four, nothing happens and your reel stays stuck in free spool. Five, thumb bar stays in the down position. Six, you've turned your reel upside down to beat it to re-engage. Seven, the reel might or might not re-engage. By the time it re-engages, the fish gained valuable seconds and you possibly lost your fish. While some anglers were begging the industry for lighter and fancier fishing reels, what all of us got in return was more advanced and affordable technology, lighter, fancier, yet less durable reels. In my opinion, the industry sacrificed innovation and long-term durability for less weight. Eight years ago, it clicked. Maybe this flaw is known about by manufacturers, but there had to be a reason why they wouldn't or couldn't address it. Being an industry outsider, I could only guess as to what that reason could be. Finally, it came to me, aha! This is the ever so important bridge linking two great parts groups to the rest of the reel, and without it, the fishing reel becomes a paperweight. This bridge, or part, is limited by the amount the manufacturers want to produce for any particular model or generation. Once they run out and the rest of the secondary parts supply chain is emptied, so goes for the model users across the world. For too many years, too many fishing reels with a lot of life and possibility left in them have had to be put to rest simply due to a lack of a new clutch pawl or kick lever or better understood of as today, heart and soul. Many of the other fishing reel parts in a fishing reel that experience common wear and tear will always be able to be found with primary and secondary market manufacturers. Our goal is to create high quality, meaningful, sustaining innovation for those that can't be found. Yes, we fully expect to expand into drive shafts, AR winches, worm shafts, and more if we find this to be a successful path. Now let me explain the true value of a clutch pawl or kick lever. Imagine for just a few seconds, unknowingly allowing a fish of a lifetime swimming off with your lure before you can engage at all. For a tournament angler, it could make the difference between a sizable paycheck and nothing. For a guide, it could mean their clients won't have a bad experience due to something as common as a clutch paw failure, therefore possibly securing more return business for the future. For fishing reel repair businesses across the world, it could mean more service that they can act upon. Reel repair businesses will now be able to service more fishing reels with meaningful, high quality, alternate parts. For those anglers who either have fishing reels loaded with sentimental value or luck, they can now keep them in action. For the manufacturers, they can now have a home to acquire higher quality parts to help them produce better long-term investment type products. And I think most importantly, for the average Joe who is sick and tired of being forced into paying for a brand new reel sooner than expected, now doesn't have to. The average Joe can now expect to keep their fishing reels for longer if they shop based on our product support. The life expectancy of a fishing reel just increased substantially and the potential for clutch pawl or kick lever failure has just become practically non-existent with the installation of our meaningful high quality aftermarket alternates. Six years ago, after years of research and development, I decided to put in the legwork to put my plan into action. I contacted my CNC consultant, 
and started the re-engineering process. I quickly realized that there was no way, shape, or form that I could afford this manufacturing process yet. So I created one to provide a test run. It's still running strong to this very day. Then I paused and continued to work and save till I could be in a position to pull the trigger. During this time, I continued to educate the public utilizing various social media platforms on common fishing reel failures. For the last six years, I have found no help and no hand ups. I searched high and low for a strategy to try to find a way to put my plan into action to no avail. I still, to this day, may be the only one who actually believes that there is any success to be found here. The first major obstacle was establishing the possibility and organizing the capability. But now, I'm struggling with the idea of failure. Not product failure, personal failure. As in, I know the true value and the quality of these alternates, but will I be able to educate and convince enough people to also realize the true value and quality of these alternates? If I were to say, if I fail at this, my wife and I will have nothing but each other. That would surely be an understatement. But at least we would still have each other. You see, I have no room for failure. Full stop. Having had experienced successes and failures in the past, like many others could admit, if failure comes my way, I can accept and deal with that. What I can't deal with is failing my wife and those closest to me. We were both generational children who changed a trajectory of possibilities within our own no safety net families. We both strive to become more successful than those who came before us. We work hard, always pay our bills, and still live just a hair beyond paycheck to paycheck. But fortunately, our love for each other grows as each day passes. We both come from fairly poor and very simple stock, where we've always tended to care more about time than we ever have money. Time spent well, in our opinion, is invaluable. Unfortunately, I can't exchange my time for manufacturing, which inevitably will allow me to make the impact on the world that I know I'm capable of. You see, I can't fail. Neither can my meaningful, high quality alternates. Manufacturers X, Y, and Z will enter the marketplace this year and every year after that without any meaningful innovations being introduced. Therefore, essentially slapping lipstick on last year's pig while using last year's most expensive marketers to sell it. Even though the heart and soul is still flawed. As I sit here today, I still wonder why all the major manufacturing is all practically overseas. Once again, with all due respect for the complexity of mass manufacturing and distribution required to be a large scale manufacturer, my best guess is the cost of production overseas must be cheaper than here in the United States. Well, we all now know better what the modern concept of cheaper actually means. In many cases, it means less than, in my opinion. Who thinks the price of a brand new fishing reel is going to decrease anytime soon? Anybody? Crickets? Crickets? More than likely, the answer is no or never. I believe potential customers will pay appropriately for better and longer lasting fishing reels. They will not continue to pay the same or more for the same or similar. People pay for innovation, not stagnation. Not having the capability of mass manufacturing overseas or currently owning CNC manufacturing equipment, I cannot even begin to create, manufacture, and distribute with a primary focus on price point. I have to create and manufacture locally in order to take a hands-on approach 
while being focused, focused solely on quality. I think at this point, we all know that higher costs and prices are associated with manufacturing high quality products and doing it right here in the United States. It seems like life and business gets more expensive with each day that passes with no way to stop or slow it. Essentially, I have three main priorities. Pay for the cost of current business, pay for the cost of future business, and keep a meal on my family dinner table. As of today, I have very little control over the cost of production. Therefore, I have only a little control over the price to the consumer. With the little bit of control over the price that I do have, I commit and promise to sell every alternate clutch ball or kick lever product we produce for the exact same price, regardless of how cheap or expensive the supported fishing reel is worth. Barring, of course, any external factors that affect our cost of production and or distribution. So today, I am here to release the world's strongest and longest lasting fishing reel clutch paw alternate the world has ever known. This first clutch paw alternate has been created as a re-engineered and hardened aftermarket alternate to support the ever so popular right-handed green Shimano Corrado 200 Bantam series of fishing reels. The green Shimano Corrado 200 Bantam series seemed like they lasted forever until just a few years ago when new replacement stock clutch paws became almost impossible to acquire. Since then, probably much like others, my small fishing reel repair business in Austin, Texas has been turning away customer after customer trying to have their green Corrado 200 Bantam serviced due to the inability to replace the clutch paw. Well, we are now taking the responsibility to inject the first most meaningful sustaining innovation to the modern fishing reel in decades. Increased lifespan. The world's strongest and longest lasting aftermarket fishing reel clutch pawl and kick lever will be sold at 9425 MSRP and only produced in limited quantities until we can afford to expand. While I won't divulge too much more on the method to my madness, I can promise that our customers will have the confidence of eliminating potential clutch paw failure and adding a substantial amount of life to their reels. Personally, I would rather rely on something that's predetermined to succeed than predetermined to fail.